Good morning. Yes. Today's appeal is going to be different. I'm sure you've heard that saying often that you cannot beat the system. And that's why the appeal today, this morning, is something completely different from what you've ever heard from me before. Today's alert is actually going to be going beyond religion. And that's why I would advise you again to like, please take out time to talk to people, take out time to share this and make sure that uh, as many as possible get to hear this morning's cry. In the next few minutes, I'm going to be starting on an appeal for the life of the African child. I'm talking about a life of promise of nothing but pain and misery. This morning's broadcast is different. In a few minutes, I'm going to be crying out on behalf of the African child, talking about a life of pain and a life of misery. It's not going to be a very long broadcast this morning, but this is a special appeal that I will ask you to please share with as many as possible. It's called, titled The African Child, A Life of Pain and Misery. This morning's broadcast goes beyond religion, way beyond religion. And that's why I want you to get me this promise that as I begin to explain and expound on this in the next few minutes, if you have access, you will promise me that if what I'm about to say gets to you and it makes sense to you, then the onus is on you to ensure that people like President Paul Bia of Cameroon, Dramani Mahama of Ghana, people like Joseph Kabila of DRC, people like uh, Paul Kagame, uh, Museveni of Uganda, Robert Mugabe, the, I'm broadcasting from Nigeria right now, Lagos, Nigeria, people like uh, my own president in Nigeria. If what I'm about to prove to you makes sense and uh, it is something of which you are persuaded, then you will please take it upon yourself, for those of you who have access, to make sure that presidents like this will access this morning's broadcast. Because as I speak to you right now, all over Africa, it doesn't matter, the children of Africa, whether it's in Algeria, Equatorial Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Kenya, and Uganda, in Tanzania, in Rwanda, Morocco, Mali, in Malawi, it doesn't really matter which part of Africa it is, but I can tell you something, that the majority of the children of Africa have woken up to another day of pain, another day of misery. And these things are going to continue until we find out that we cannot beat the system. And that's why my appeal is such that I've asked us to please, if you have the access, make sure that you get this word across to people like uh, the president of Cameroon, president of Ghana, uh, DRC, president of Rwanda, the key presidents in Africa. I'm only mentioning a few right now including my own president in Nigeria. What I'm about to show to you right now is something that's very simple, but it's another cry out. And uh, do promise that if this reaches you and it touches your heart on behalf of the children of Africa, you will ensure that the word, that this prayer alert, which is beyond religion, gets into the high places of Africa. Now let's get started. You see, when you view from a very high altitude, sometimes there are patterns that can be observed in a landscape that would otherwise go unnoticed mm -hmm. at the pedestrian level. I want to say something to you right now that the modern African experience is like that too. If you can remove yourself and go high and look into the modern African experience, there are so many fractals, so many patterns and feeder loops that will jump out of the frame when you take a panoramic view of our common history in Africa and you scan it 
from a position of advantage. You don't have to have a doctorate degree in chaos theory to see that the consistent and predictable failure of Africa's 54 nation states and 10 dependent territories is a product of engineering. Let me say this again. You cannot beat the system. The expanding fractals of failure in black Africa point to something that is called deterministic chaos, similar to a double rod pendulum. When you look at the chaotic patterns that are generated in the model of a double rod pendulum, you will be looking at the story of Africa. And that's why I want you to just bear with me in a few minutes as I'm going to be showing you a little visual of a double rod pendulum and to show you the real story of Africa. On a good day, when you have a pendulum that is swinging, the swing of a pendulum will create at best, it will create for you, at best, it will create for you a perfect circle. But when you break a double rod, uh, a pendulum, it begins to generate a pattern of chaos. Now, what you see here is a representation of Africa. And when I tell you that you cannot beat the system, looking at the patterns generated, all you see is chaos, even though it's meant to be a pendulum. Number one, would you ever believe that the chaos that you are seeing that is being generated is being generated by a pendulum that has one fixed point. Let's take another look at it again. A double rod pendulum has one fixed point. But because it has been broken, instead of generating a perfect circle which would represent success, what we have is that this broken pendulum begins to generate chaos, complete chaos, such that it'd be very difficult if not that you're looking at it right now, to believe that all these chaotic patterns are being generated from one fixed node. Now, in chaos theory, these are the kind of things you need to understand. A simple pendulum will generate a perfect circle, which is representative of success. But a broken pendulum, a double rod pendulum, can you see, is producing nothing but chaos. Now, this chaos you see is the product that is coming out of 54 nation states and 10 dependent of, uh, territories of Africa on a daily basis. And when we tell you that you cannot beat the system, this is what we are trying to get you to understand. Now, I would like to just say a few things about what you have just been watching. Number one, looking at the chaotic patterns generated by that double rod pendulum, it will be difficult for anybody to explain to you that all that chaos is being generated by a pendulum with a fixed point. Now, secondly, what looks like seeming chaos can be captured as a mathematical equation if what we call the locus of the second pendulum, where it is broken, were to be tracked. In the model I just showed you, all your attention, we'll go back to it in a minute, all your attention has been on the fixed point of the pendulum. But notice that the chaos is not being generated by just one fixed point, but the chaos is being generated because the pendulum is broken. And if you track the locus, the movement of the second break, where the break is in the pendulum, if you were to track its movement, which is not shown in this graph, you would easily see that the chaos that is being generated, the chaos that is coming out of this, actually can be charted and tracked as a mathematical equation. Because the distance between the fixed point that starts the pendulum and where it is broken is a constant. Now, what am I saying to you? The circle that should be generated by a pendulum is what will represent success. But what the chaos that is being generated by this broken pendulum is 
the result coming out of the same effort that it takes to get success for other nations is the result that is now coming out for African nations. Now, when I say you cannot beat the system, this is the appeal that we need to make to African leaders in high places. When I say to you that Africa will never ever resolve its problems until we understand programming, a lot of people don't understand what we're saying. But if you look at chaos theory, now, using this imagery, can you imagine what a rogue engineer could do to distort the uniform geometric results you expect from a single pendulum? Now, to resolve that problem and restore the anticipated success or order, all you will need to do is to stiffen that pendulum. Now, if we are explaining a solution to people who are immersed in that chaos, do you think it will be easy to explain to them that all the chaos that is being generated year in, year out, decade in, decade out, that is punishing the children of Africa, is actually based on engineering? And this is because this kind of engineering, chaos engineering, is not the strongest point of the African mind. Now, explaining such a solution to people immersed in the chaos is an uphill task. It's difficult. But this simple model represents all that is required to fix Africa. If chaos theory is the study of the transition from order to disorder, an orderly society to a disorderly one in a system, then... Failure engineering will be an exploitation of such knowledge to create and maintain what is called deterministic chaos. The chaos gen generated by that double rod pendulum is what they call deterministic chaos. Now, this is the story of Africa and the greatest challenge of our times. This is something that I wish uh, President Paul B. of Cameroon, President uh, Mahama of Ghana, Kabilas, the Kagames, the Yoweris, the Mugabes of this world, including the president of Nigeria. This is the kind of thing I wish that African presidents understood thoroughly. To see that it doesn't matter the amount of effort you are putting in, it doesn't matter how well-intentioned you are, you cannot beat the system. In chaos theory, the, it, it's a study of the transition of order to disorder. Failure engineering is people who take possession of the mathematical equations of chaos theory and then invert it and create permanent chaos, deterministic chaos. That is the story of Africa. And it is the single root of failure more than any other that is responsible for the pain, the sorrow, the poverty, the aches, the tears of African nations. And this is what actually informs and describes the modern African experience. It is the root of many frustrating limitations in governance all over Africa. The governance of our nations is a product of failure engineering, starting with 1884 with the Berlin Conference. And it is the primary source of the devaluation of human worth on the continent, which directly results in a poverty level that good intentions cannot handle until we reverse engineer what you have just seen. Now, the good news is that this failure engineering has a solution. But the greater challenge is that the emotive, intuitive, unscientific mold of the average African citizen cannot generate the level of critical thought needed to appreciate the solution. Now, this is what puts an extra burden on the leadership of African states. They carry an extra burden to develop the architecture of thought. They must develop the architecture of thought that can master the principles of failure engineering so we can then cure it. They must understand simple things like sociocultural uh, uh, programming, classical conditioning, transmarginal inhibition, and other elements involved in failure engineering. Until African leaders understand the need for this reverse engineering, the chaos and the perennial failures that describe the modern African experience will not be resolved. The children of Africa will continue to suffer until African leadership exhausts all other options. 
please get this across to African leaders. Get this across to them, to people in authority. We can't beat the system until we learn to reverse engineer it. Prayer and fasting for Africa is good across religious lines. But a man that has prayed and fasted for 40 days will jump off a high platform and discover that the law of gravity will not be suspended because of his religion. Failure engineering employs the principles that exist in nature. And that is why there are many details that I cannot begin to expound on here. But the fact is that all African efforts to succeed in this present global arrangement will continue to yield nothing, nothing significant, until we learn the secret of how to reverse failure engineering. Now, if you permit me again, I'm going to just take us back to the model that explains failure engineering. It's so simple. What you're seeing and what you're about to see right now on the screen is that take a pendulum and break it. Instead of getting a perfect circle that will give you success, your result will be chaos. Look at the chaos that's been traced out there. That chaos is the life of Africa. And now you can see how chaos can be generated using mathematical equations. And at the same time, this chaos can only be resolved when you understand how to reverse engineer. In this case that you're looking at, would anybody believe that the chaos you're looking at is a product of a fixed point of a pendulum? Ordinarily, a pendulum will cut a perfect circle which will represent success. But the truth is that this is the African experience. It's so simple. A broken pendulum gives you a double rod pendulum, which instead of a perfect circle, will continue to give you products that have a deterministic, uh, chaotic uh, result for you all of the time. This has to go beyond religion. All your prayer, all your fasting, looking at this double rod pendulum, will not change the chaos that you are looking at. So this is my appeal once more as I close this right now that um, if we really want the children of Africa to have a tomorrow, we're going to have to borrow a wisdom and ensure that this wisdom gets into the highest of places of governance in Africa at the level of precedence so that all their good intentions will not go to waste. By the time Africa finally discovers that failure engineering is the root of uh, problems, primarily in Africa, a lot of precedents in history will look very bad. History will not be kind to them at all. Not because they were not enthusiastic or they lacked the zeal to cure the problems of Africa, but for the simple fact that we rejected a wisdom that is so simple that will fix Africa and get us the kind of results that Africa should be generating. Let me close with this statement. There's no doubt that the consistent results coming out of the 54 nation states and 10 dependent territories of Africa are difficult to explain. The failures are not consistent with humanity. The results we are looking at year in, year out, decade in, decade out in Africa are not the product of men who are created in the image and the likeness of God. The products we are looking at look more like what animals will produce, beasts will produce. And you will not believe this. It's just simply because the system has been rigged against Africa. What I'm saying to you, many leaders in the Western world, many leaders in the Arab world, Many leaders out there understand these things, but nobody is going to explain it to Africa. So please do me a favor. Get this broadcast out to as many persons as you can. Have mercy on the child children of Africa. The life of pain and misery can be put to a halt if only you will master programming, understand failure engineering, and reverse engineer what is bringing all this shame and pain all over Africa? God bless you.
Please play your role and let the children of Africa have a promise of tomorrow. I'm signing out. I'm talking to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So it doesn't matter whether you're in Ghana, whether in Djibouti, whether you're in Egypt, wherever it is, as long as you're in any African country, this is our primary concern. Our children must leave. Thank you very much.